what was the story when, you know, early on, I, I mean, I don't remember the time frame, but when Letterman left to go do CBS, do I have it right that you were the guy the network was considering, not Conan O'Brien, they wanted you to take over the Letterman slot. That's what I heard. And also- On NBC? On NBC. That's what no, I had always heard. No, there was a, there was a process. Uh, what happened was they ran like almost like an audition process and they got it down to like, I don't know, 10 people, five, 10 people. And I was one of those people. Uh, and they brought, I think they, they brought us all out to Los Angeles to perform at the improv in, in Los Angeles. It might've been Lauren Michaels. I think he was part of that selection group. And I can't remember exactly who was even on the bill that night. It might've been like Drew Carey and Paul Provenza and some other folks. Uh, and we performed stand up on there and it was kind of the final, uh, round of the auditions. And then ultimately, I think it kind of ended there. None, none of us, I don't think, did test shows except for like, I think Conan did some test shows and then that was it. I'll tell you one thing I was up on. Back in that whole Leno era, before Conan took over The Tonight Show, Jeff Zucker had me out to dinner and told me he wanted me to guest host The Tonight Show to be their permanent guest host. And I was like, does Jay Leno know about this? And he's like, absolutely. He loves the idea. And as it turned out, like, no, he didn't know. <laughs> and he didn't love the idea. And you were fucking making the whole thing up. And I just, we, wow. we still, I talked to James about it, uh, uh, Dixon, and we're always like, what the fuck was that dinner? That was the weirdest fucking dinner. Wow. Yeah. It's so weird. You know what else? Yeah. Here you are, a guy they're considering maybe as a takeover for Letterman, and then they yeah. want to see you do stand up. And, and what does that got to do with you taking over Letterman? I think they just wanted to kind of get a sense of, you know, who the fuck knows? Well, what's a real audition for a talk show other than like you do it and everybody sucks at right. it. Like for the first six months, like it's, it's a, it, it's an art form. It's, it's the thing that you perfected over all those years and you never really know. And then, and, and look, Conan was not really a performer. He wasn't a stand up or anything, but man, he created like a very iconic and unique kind of show because those shows are fucking reductive and they're basically a copy of another show. And it's very hard to do something original. Well, you know, it makes a good point about you as a performer. In a way, thank God, none of that worked out because that forced you to go to Comedy Central and develop a whole new format. I don't think anyone was doing anything like The Daily Show. I think like much well, like- Well, The Daily Bunch. Show existed. You know, they built a nice car. We were able to modify it a little bit to our, to okay. our liking and, uh, right. and, and take it into the other direction. But it's like music to a large extent. There's influences and in all kinds of different things. And so, you know- you can always trace it back and go, there's a little Stern in this. There's a little Carson in this. There's uh, a little Smothers Brothers. There's a little bit of hopefully Carlin. Yeah. So, you know, it's all those people that you admired and hopefully that influence gets to percolate kind of in your own, in your own sauce. And, and you come out with something that is unique to what you do. I always said that on the show, we'll know when we're succeeding when we do things that could only happen here.